What's going on, guys? Ryan O'Toole back here again for episode 20 of the Endgame series. Guys, two more episodes left. This episode right here and the next episode, Captain Marvel. And now we're going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Directed again by Peyton Reed, starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, Walton Goggins, as well as Hannah John Kamen as Ghost. And guys, I'm super excited to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp with my special guest right here. If you talk about loyal subscribers to my channel, this is one of them. This guy comments on all my videos. He's a huge supporter of the channel. And he's also been on Rotten or Fresh as well, season two. And he's a really well-known face here in this community. And I think he has a great channel, and you guys should definitely go check him out. That is Devin Pilgrim. Devin, welcome to the Endgame series, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've had so much fun collaborating with you in the past. We've done a couple of Rotten or Fresh episodes together, and I am so glad that we're taking a break from all that and we're talking about Ant-Man. For one, I'm just tired of getting my ass beat at Ant-Man and the Wasp, so that's great. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, man. Devin, thank you so much, man. It's always great to talk with you in the comment section and through videos as well. And guys, before we talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp, just so you guys know, if you don't know what the Endgame series is, this isn't a review. We're doing an in-depth discussion, sort of. I'm going to be asking Devin 10 questions about this film, and we're just going to be answering them. And what we want you guys to feel like you're part of the conversation as well is let us know your answers to the questions down below. And also let us know your thoughts of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Do you love it? Think it's okay? Do you absolutely hate it? Devin, talk about this film. What was your first experience like? Did you see it in theaters? And tell us about your experience. So, yeah, I saw this in theaters whenever it came out. It was the opening weekend that it came out because um, I did a review on it. And this is the first movie after Infinity War. So it's kind of like a breath of fresh air to kind of like go back to all the fun that the MCU was and not have to think about, you know, um, all the stuff that happened um, in the previous movie, you know, you got the dust settled, so to speak. I had a lot of fun whenever I first saw this movie, but things have kind of changed for me. I have some opinions about this film as well, and similar experience to you, seeing this film open in night was a pretty exciting experience. I really liked the first Ant-Man. I thought Paul Rudd was excellent in Peyton Reed's heist direction. Even though we all would have loved to see Edgar Wright direct Ant-Man, but I thought Peyton Reed did a great job. And so he was coming back for Ant-Man and the Wasp. And just like you said, this was the palate cleanser after the seriousness of Infinity War. And we just wanted a fun movie. And this movie was a lot of fun. This movie delivered a lot of the goods. It was a great theater experience. But I do have issues with the film. It's not a perfect movie. It's not as good as the first Ant-Man, but still, really enjoyable film. Name one aspect about this film that you think they did better than the first one. One aspect that I really think about this movie that is really good is the humor. Like, the humor is there uh, with the first movie and in the second movie. I think that this movie, or uh, in the, this movie, uh, the humor is a lot better. There's a lot more jokes in it. Uh, sometimes it does take away from the plot, but overall, I think that the humor does land. I think the first one had a lot more clever humor, but... One of the things I felt this film did better than the first one was diving into more of the quantum realm, which we saw in the first film. The, the quantum realm is a huge plot point in this film, and I really like the way they introduced that. Also bringing in the story of them trying to find Janet, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and all that was really good. I thought the chemistry was even better as well between Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, and Evangeline Lilly. All of them work really well together. The chemistry is just really fast-paced in this film. And that's what this movie does do better than the first one, for sure. Seeing all of these people on screen, you know, kind of talking to each other and just listening to the dialogue, because the dialogue is pretty good in this movie, I think. Absolutely. The dialogue was very witty in this film, for sure. And, Devin, I want to ask you this question, because a lot of people had this going into their reviews saying, do you feel that Wasp overshadowed Ant-Man in this film? Yes and no, but I can kind of see why she kind of overshadows Ant-Man in this movie is because it's more of her, her story. You know, you're dealing with her trying to get her mother back and stuff like that. And so Ant-Man, in a way, does take a back seat uh, slightly, but I still think that he has time to shine in this movie. So I don't 
really say I don't really think that I would say that she overshadows him, but in some aspects, yeah, maybe. You could definitely call this the Wasp, but really both of them have their moments to shine. It's mostly Wasp's movie. It's mostly Hope Van Dyme trying to find her mother, who is her role model. And you see from the opening scene of the film, she really loves her mother and her father, Hank Pym. The, they really dived into that uh, sad tra backstory about Janet sacrificing herself and all that. And I really felt for Hope in this movie a lot. She definitely wants to find her mother. She's not going to give up doing that. And it's really focused on her and Hank trying to find Janet. But really, Scott Lang adds his own fun, too. He gets his moment to shine. He's under house arrest after the events of Civil War. He can't leave his house or else if he breaks the fence, then the police search his house and all that. And he's trying to support his daughter, just like the first one. So both of them have their own stories and different missions they have to accomplish. And their team-ups are really entertaining. The little story arc between the FBI agent and uh, Scott, it just cracks me up because, like, they're doing this cat and mouse game. And, like, Scott's trying not to get caught while trying to help Hank and uh, uh, his daughter. And I, just, I think that's a really fun aspect to it. How'd you do it, Scott? The car trick. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's some good back and forth between them. I thought that was really funny, for yeah, sure. There's a, there's a lot of funny banner in here. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of funny jokes in this movie, which I'm sure we'll talk about. So, Devin... Let me ask you this. Let's talk about Michelle Pfeiffer, the newest character, one of the newest characters being introduced as Janet Van Dyme. A lot of people had issues with her, but talk about her. What about this character interests you, and what didn't interest you about Janet Van Dyme? Michelle Pfeiffer, I think she did fine for what she needed to do. I don't think that she absolutely blew me away with her character. I don't think that any other like actress should, could have played her. Like I think that She's definitely replaceable, but she did fine for what she was supposed to do. Worked really well as Mike, as um, um, Michael Douglas's wife in the film, and sure. Yeah. And their back and forth were cool. Once she gets introduced into the final act of the film, the ability she's able to do, the, the big thing that she does, spoiler alert, heals ghosts. Yeah. It definitely was very confusing. I was just like, really? She could really do that? But... Still, the I just really love the story of them trying to find her. And it's not the best, but Michelle Pfeiffer was fine for what she did in the film. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see, like, if they'll ever take that little thing with her where she, like, healed her to, like, a next level and, like, see more of that. Because that's really interesting to me. Yeah, if they do an Ant-Man 3, I'm sure they'll explain how she could do those abilities. And Endgame, maybe, we'll see. We'll, yeah, we'll see when we talk about how this film will affect the end game. But I'm curious to see what she can do in the future with that ability. Yeah. Definitely. So now, yeah. So now let's talk about our favorite scenes, Devin. Devin, what is your favorite scene in this film? Well, actually, I have two. And okay, the, the first one uh, is whenever they're trying to steal the suit back, but it's at his daughter's school. And uh, oh, he goes in there, the and like he accidentally gets stuck in between, like you know, a human and like a, you know, a child. And he looks like a child just running around school. I thought that was hilarious. Towards the end of the movie, like the chase scene where he's like on the truck, you know, kind of almost skateboarding on it. That's, that's pretty fun. Oh yeah. That was in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought that, I thought that was pretty clever of use like of one of those trucks. I was like, that's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. Good. Excuse me. Where's your hall pass? Where's your hall pass? Hey, champ, how was school today? Would you like a juice box and some cheese? <laughs> Wait, you um, have that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the comedy. Michael Douglas was even funnier in this film. My favorite scene is Luis's story, his second story he has. Yeah. <laughs> and that was definitely my favorite scene. Like, I far, the, the way... Yeah, keep going. Yeah, when they go in depth, just like the first Ant-Man, when Luis is telling his story. So I was at a wine tasting with my cousin Vanessa. And then he just, Walton Goggins is interrogating him in the film, and he's just talking random stuff. Like, I met Scotty in prison, and then Hope left him and everything. And then I was just thinking about those intimate donuts. I just want to taste it and go, whoa! Yeah. yeah. I really hope that they keep that as kind of like a running gag, because that's just hilarious every time he does that. And Michael Pena is so perfect for that role, I think. He's hilarious. Yeah, any scene with Michael Pena was my favorite. It's not true serum. It's true serum, bro. <laughs> yeah. And also, they really dive into the, the gang as well, T.I. and that other dude. 
Do you know Baba Yaga? Baba yeah. Yaga? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, they, love they, the little, I love the little side characters off, you know, with uh, Michael Pena's character as well. Yeah. yeah. And T.I. was a rapper I listened to growing up, and now he's funny in an Ant Man film. So that, exactly. that was cool seeing all those uh, characters interact with one another. So, Devin, talk about your least favorite scene now. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it an actual scene, but there's definitely a part that kind of bugs me, and it's like the villain, um, Ghost. I don't think that she's very good, and she doesn't really fit for the, the overall story of the movie, I think. I think that they should have went a different way, and they could have, but we'll talk about that. But I think my least favorite scenes were any scene with Walton Goggins, Sonny Birch, and his henchmen. They're so... Yeah unnecessary like any scene that they're in they just feel like plot devices and all that and with their guys trying to crack jokes and all that the only funny part i really liked was at the end where they were using the true serum and all that i've committed many re- felonies in my restaurant that was funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I was like, all right that's kind of off the wall but i mean he's still all right truth, so now so. they just join them for the car chase too okay yeah. just because they want they just want the lab. They just want that yeah. big suitcase building, which was really cool. Exactly. Um, yeah, any scene with them was definitely my least favorite. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Let's talk about Lawrence Fishburne for a bit. He plays Bill, who is Hank Pym's former rival who he fired and worked. They have a, a little of fallout in this film. I thought he was going to be the main villain, but apparently yeah. he's just helping Ghost. He took her in when she was a, ba- a kid and all that. And he, he has a little bit of an arc, but yeah, he could have done had more to do for sure in Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, I mean, you have this name like Lawrence Fishburne, and you don't really use him right. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Like he would have been, he would have made a awesome villain, but they kind of made him take a back seat to Ghost, and I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, because in the comic books, you partner with Hank Pym on Goliath. That's something you could have expanded on, but yeah. Mm-hmm. It, the DCU waste him, and now the MCU wasted him. Yeah, but, so, uh, yeah. so he's um, just gonna get wasted for now on. <laughs> yeah, he's, I, that's just what he is. Hopefully, John Wick three, he's not wasted. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, Devin, let's talk about the villains now. Uh, the question is, let's talk about Ghost and Walton Goggins. Which villain could have they done better on? You were talking about Ghost, so talk about Ghost. The reason I don't really like Ghost in this movie is because. It's this movie is ultimately about uh, trying to get the mother back from the quantum realm. And yes, Ghost has all this stuff going on with her, and she's not really a villain, but she's trying to like fix her body and you know make sure that she's okay because she's ultimately dying. And Walter Go- or Walton Goggins, I or uh, I think that he was pretty solid. He's a great actor. Like I love him in Quentin Tarantino movies. Oh, and he's so good in that. And I really think that he was wasted potential because you have this awesome idea of this guy trying to get this equipment that they need to get the mother back. They just kind of waste that story arc. Like, what if he got the the equipment like midway through the movie and he sold it to some other villain? And that would have been awesome, you know, because they're trying to get back from this big bad guy, you know? Felt like they were like the sovereign. Like, they just... They had come in, and then something happens with them, and now they're a part of the fight as well. Like, it's not their fight. And Walton Goggins is very charismatic, such a great actor. Yeah, There's, It's just wasted potential, like you said. And with Ghost, I kind of like Ghost's aspects, but she wasn't the best villain in the world. She's not a yeah. villain, but she's you see why she feels this anger and pain. Yeah. She is feeling right now her father died in that whole explosion like you feel for her character for sure yeah. but they should have written her a lot better in the yeah and i really loved her and her suit and the action sequences she was kick-ass but the character they could have fleshed more of yeah that suit was definitely awesome and like just seeing her in action that was awesome but the character you know it needed some work so same with walton goggins character like but that's Marvel for you. Marvel just has a villain problem to begin with, you know, for the most part. Yeah, they definitely improved, but they went back a little bit with those two. Yeah, so let's talk about the end credit scene, not the one with the ant. So oh, the end credit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we needed that. But anyway, uh, let's talk about fine. the end credit scene with 
them with Ant-Man going into the quantum realm, getting stuck, and then boom, Janet, Hank, and Hope all turn to dust. So let's yeah. talk about that. So Devin, what were you expecting from this end credit scene? Did you see this coming? And we'll just talk about your overall reaction seeing it. Like, obviously, I knew that one of these end credit scenes was going to deal with, you know, some people... Um, going you know kaboom because like we saw the end of infinity war this takes place shortly before infinity war so obviously someone's gonna turn to ash later on in the movie and they did they did the app uh, the opposite thing of what i was expecting i was actually expecting ant-man's daughter scott's daughter to disappear in front of him and i think that that would have made more of an emotional pack but still like i think that's a pretty solid uh post grad scene i didn't expect hank and hope to turn to dust i kind of expected somebody like janet or scott's daughter in the film to turn to dust but seeing yeah. all three of them that definitely surprised me but i knew it was coming obviously someone was gonna bite the dust but anyway <laughs> <laughs> but still yeah i would have loved to see that as well seeing scott seeing his daughter turn to dust right in front of him that gets him yeah. into end game that would have been emotional and i hoped i hoped we would have saw ronan Hawkeye in the end credits. Scene. Yeah, like, that yeah. would have been awesome. Yeah, I'd be like, Scott, I got a call. Did you get a call? No, that'd be so cheesy, but <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But yeah, that, that was definitely an eye popping end credit scene that we all saw coming. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's talk about now rankings. So, uh, Devin, where does Ant Man and the Wasp rank in your MCU ranking? Initially, whenever I saw this movie, it was like right behind Ant Man in my ranking. But since seeing it, it's actually went down to number twenty, believe it or not. I really? still think it's a fun I still think it's a fun film. But like the more I watch it, the more I just find that I don't really care about it. And like the story arc with ghosts just kind of bothers me, you know? This falls between thirteen through fifteen as of right now. It was originally just like you right behind the first one. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, there are issues re-watching it multiple times that's bumped it down to 15 or 14 for me. I need to do my updated MCU ranking, which is after Far From Home. That'll definitely be a challenge, but it's in the ballpark of the first Thor and uh, Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel. I'm just not sure where those rank as of right yeah. now. Yeah, I still enjoy it very much, but like it's just lower. It's on the lower end of my list, you know. Yeah, yeah, for understandable, man. So yeah. now let's just answer this question that I'm curious to hear your answer for. How will Ant-Man and the Wasp affect the Endgame? That is different theories you can think of. So how will it affect it, Devin? Well, it really goes back to that post credit scene. You know, you have Scott, he's stuck in the quantum realm, and it's all about how he's going to get out of the quantum realm. Obviously, the biggest theory going around right now is that Captain Marvel is going to pull him out. That would be kind of cool, even though her movie – over or underwhelmed me but that's another video <laughs> but like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's another time for another <laughs> um but yeah i i think that captain marvel's gonna pull him out and then she's gonna be like hey some shit's gone down you need to come with me let's go find the avengers it definitely leads into where scott is and how is when he finds out that hope hank and janet turned to dust we don't know if his daughter turned to dust or his other family members, Judy Greer and the other, the cop dude from the first one. We don't know if they turned to dust or not. So it's definitely going to come down to Scott getting out of the quantum realm. We know he obviously goes to the Avengers facility. We have no idea if that's fake footage or not. Him going to the Avengers facility, being like, hey, it's me, Ant-Man. It's me. Remember me? Yeah. yeah. Can you please open the door? <laughs> yeah. You remember? Yeah, it's me. Thought... Can you please let me in? Remember, I fought like half of you like a couple years ago. I turned yeah. into a giant man. Remember me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we we don't know if that's real footage or not. That's just the Russos effing with us. But but it definitely comes down to Ant Man using his abilities to get his friends out of the Dustin phase, get Hope back, get Hank back, and Janet. It's definitely going to come down to Ant Man using his robbery skills as well, which I alluded to in the first Ant Man. Yeah. which I think he could definitely use, and his shrinking ability. You can't forget his shrinking ability. And many of the theories I see now, 
<laughs> oh, I know what theory you're talking about. The Tyson theory. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing up Thanos by shrinking into his butt. I don't know if that's happening. Or- that would oh. be amazing. But, uh, I mean, it would be pretty funny if, like, if they didn't do that, but, like, if they had him go up his nose and then Thanos just pick him out, like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, damn, like, damn flies. He is wearing his armor this time, so and that would be kind of hard. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm curious to see what does happen. Like, who's going to stop Thanos? That I'm curious about. Yeah. Or maybe it could be I, Stan Lee. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We That'd need a, Stan Lee to stop this Thanos. This is his final cameo. Let's do something. The best cameo, him killing Thanos. Man, like I'm going to I'm gonna cry whenever like the cameo comes on. Because yeah. it's like the last time he's going to be in the movie. the last time. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's going to be the very sad moment. We're all going to stand up and cheer for him and all that. So. Like, it's going to be great. Yeah. I'm so excited for the game. They're going to make this his best cameo yet, I am for sure. But anyway, guys, not to get depressed, but that is <laughs> the answers to Ant-Man and the Wasp. So, guys, let us know in the comments section below your answers to this film. And what do you guys think of our answers? Do you agree, disagree? Are we crazy? Let us know down below. And, Devin, thank you so much, man, for joining with me and talking Ant-Man and the Wasp. It was a pleasure, man. It's always great talking with you about movies. And, Devin... Really quickly, tell my subscribers where they can find you on your social media. So you can actually find me here on YouTube. Uh, I haven't made a video in quite a while because I've been super busy. But my name, or I, my name on YouTube is the same as my real name, Devin Pilgrim. You can look me up. I got a bunch of videos on there. I'm gonna start making videos again here soon. I just don't know when. So look out for that. Yes, definitely go check out Devin Pilgrim, guys. He has a lot of great content over there on his channel. The link is in the description below. He loves movies as well. Definitely give him the love and support. And, guys, that does it for Ant-Man and the Wasp. We got one more episode left, and then we're at the end game. Oh, my God. Get excited, guys. We are getting to Captain Marvel up next with Sean Chandler talks about the best for last. It's going to be a best discussion possible. Guys, Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Endgame series. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Devin. Link in the description below and my channel for more content. And all my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!